think G20 uh, has its own agenda. Um, and uh, in fact, I mean, uh, G20 has a, a multi year agenda. Uh, when we think about how G20 came into being, I think it is important to look back a little bit uh, the history of the G20. G20 was created uh, after the first Asian crisis and the Russian crisis, 1997-1998. And then at that time it was created at the level of uh, ministers of finance. Then when we had the financial crisis, which uh, turned into a very big global crisis after 2008, it was elevated to leaders summit. And then it started, in fact, I mean, then there was a realization, uh, we live in a global world, we face global challenges, and we need global answers. That's why from then on, it has uh, become a very, let's say, uh, international forum uh, for the better coordination of economic policies. And today, I think we could say that G20 has achieved uh, to make the financial system uh, to be more resilient and to be stronger. I think G20 could a little bit take uh, pride uh, in this development. And other than that, then the G20's agenda has expanded. And uh, Turkey, that's why we we'll continue, in fact, uh, already, uh, let's say, a good legacy of the previous presidencies. Of course, the Turkish, I mean, presidency will have some priorities during its term. Um, Turkey's presidency this year is formula formulated around the three I's. Uh, in inclusiveness, implementation, and investment for growth. If we look at the implementation uh, notion, uh, perhaps there's been some criticism in the past that the G20 has not always followed through on its commitments. What can the world expect this year from Turkey's presidency and its commitment to focusing on implementation? Maybe it is not so right to criticize G20 that G20 has not always fulfilled its commitments. I mean, when we look at the a finance area, in fact, uh, lots of actions have already been taken. That's why I mean the financial system, with some of, some of the let's say uncertainties at this time, is still very resistant. Uh, that's why the implementation has not been so bad. But what we are saying to this year, in fact, of course, we have uh, committed ourselves to many policy measures in different areas, not only, only in finance, but in other areas. But this year we are putting a special emphasis because time has come uh, to turn, in fact, our words into actions. That's why, in, I mean, in the finance sector, we, do we, I mean, we need to implement some further policy measures uh, to implement them. And also last year, during the Australian presidency, we have committed ourselves to lift the growth rate, collective growth rate of the GDP of the G20 by 2.1%, which means, I mean, in order to reach that goal, all the G20 member countries have committed more than 1,000 policy measures. In order, in fact, to not to lose the uh, credibility of the G20 and in the world, I mean, today, uh, we need more than ever growth. Then we are saying that let's start to have some kind of robust uh, implementation um, monitoring system. That's why it will be our priority. This year, we are trying to work on um, for each member countries to choose, let's say, five or eight of the most impactful policy measures to start implementation as soon as possible. Not only, uh, only I mean, for growth strategies, for example, we do have for, for the employment action plan for this year or next year, and also for anti-corruption policies, I mean, action plans, this, that's why, I mean, we are saying this year will be the implementation year of the G20.